Hey everybody, what's up? This is Katakus, and today I'm going to do a review, no, not a review. <laughs> I'm going to do a tutorial on how to make a song on the MPC Live. Um, both of my reviews of the MPC Live, I included a tutorial at the end, but I don't have a video that is dedicated specifically to making a video uh, or making a tutorial. So I'm going to do that today. I'm going to try to make it as simple as possible, just from like beginning to end, how to make a song. Um, I'll be overlooking a lot of the like deeper features of the MPC Live because you don't really need them in order to just get a song done. Um, I will be using my phone uh, camera. I'll be holding it in my hand, so the shots might not be perfectly steady, and I'll have to do all the stuff on the MPC Live single-handed, like one-handedly, but uh, I think I can make it work. So without further ado, let's get started on the video, okay? Let me just turn this around. Okay, so here we are on the opening screen. Just uh, I'm going to start a new project, empty right there. And we've got the first screen here. So you've got three parts on the start here. One is your sequence bar, one is your tracks bar, and one is your drum programs. Um, your sequence makes everything happen in a single sequence. Your track is all the things that happen in a track, and you can have unlimited tracks in a single sequence. Um, and then you've got your drum program. So I'm going to show you how to make a song as simple as possible and we're going to start by de determining the bar length. I have it eight bars. You can have it four, you can have it two, you can have it one if you want to. You just have to decide that for yourself. Um, each bar is basically four count. So one, two, three, four. That's, um, that's a bar. That's each bar. Um, then you've got your BPM right here. So set that to wherever you want. I like to work at 100 BPMs for almost all of my songs for some reason. Um, then you've got your track down here, and right now it says unused because I haven't done anything in it. Man, I hope this is clear. I haven't done anything in it yet. Uh, then you've got your program bar down here. Now, program just tells the pads what to do. So the first thing you're going to need to do, let's say that we're going to start with a beat, okay? So sequence one is just going to be the beat. The first thing I need to do is determine what the pads are going to play. Right now they do nothing. They make no sound. So we're going to go to assign samples, like that. We're going to go to Browse, and then we've got a whole bunch of drum packs here. When I click on each one of them, it's going to give a demo of that drum pack. Now, that doesn't mean that you're using that drum loop. It's just showing you, like... That's just showing you the different sounds that are in that pack. But when you actually go to use it, it's not that same one drum beat. There's actually no drum beat whatsoever. So let's choose ourselves something simple. We're going to go for a house. What I'm listening for right now is the kick, the hi-hats, and the, um, the uh, snare drum that I want uh, in my, my drum pack. I like that kick and I like that uh, snare so, and uh, the hand clap. So let's, I can double click on that or I can click this knob in here uh, like that and it will load them. So now if I go back to the main, right here it's selected Deep House Kit. Sometimes it stays on program one, and so after you assign it, you're thinking like, where are my sounds? I don't, I don't understand, I just chose one. You just have to select it down here. So go from program one to the deep house, and then... I have all my sounds. Okay, so first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do a four on the floor beat. That's we're gonna do that first. So I'm going to, because I only have one hand, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold shift here and I'm gonna click on note repeat at the top right here. Okay, so now what that's done is, I'm also gonna put full level on there so that the track levels don't like, depending on how hard I press. Now it's just all one like full level. They're all as loud as they can be. Now right now you'll see the division is 1 16th. That means instead of 1 8th and 1 4th is boom, boom, boom. So we're gonna select 1 4th and I'm gonna hold it. Very easy, okay? Now I can either do the drum beat doing one sample at a time I'll show you. Let's click on record, play start. Okay. 
Okay, that's fully recorded now. So if I play it, it's just gonna be that one um, boom, boom. On top of that, I can also add, I can add that in there to have a little diversity. However, I don't wanna click record, play, start, because if I do that, it's going to erase what I've done. So you need to click on overdub, play, start. Now I'm gonna add in my snare drum. Okay, that's done. Now it's kind of boring. It's just boom, bzz, boom, bzz. it's a start, but again, it's kind of boring. So what we're gonna wanna do is turn our divisions up a little bit. So now it's, so we can add a little bit of like a, um, uh, what, flourish in here. So click on overdub, play start. Okay, so a little bit more detail in there. Now, another thing we might want there is some hi-hats. I'm gonna put them offbeat, so let's do overdub, record. Not bad, okay. Uh, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn the divisions up one more time, so now it's... And then I'm gonna add a little bit more um, uh, nuance. I like keep not being able to come up with a word that I want. I'm gonna add a little bit more like uh, flourish in there uh, to add some more diversity to the beat. So click on overdub, play start. Okay, so we've got a very basic beat down here. Beat down. <laughs> we've got a very basic beat here. And let's just play it one more time. It works. Okay, so it's not an amazing fancy beat, but it works. Let's say next we want to add a bass line. So what we're going to do from here is we can either do everything in the same sequence and try to spread it out later, or we can just start by clicking on this button right here. That's the edit button. And then copy. This is from sequence one to sequence two. Let's do it. And go to main here. And now we're on sequence two and it's exactly the same. So the next thing we want to do is go to track two not track one, because we're already done track one. We're going to track two here, and we're going to select a plugin. Now, I'm not guaranteeing that this is going to sound beautiful. I'm just going to make it functional, okay? So right here, if we click on plugin, it shows us plugin one. Don't worry, you can rename that if you want to. We've got tube synth and then preset default. That's the first sound on there. It actually has a name, but um, it's just called default. Uh, we're gonna go from tube synth right here. That's the kind of plugin that it is. There are three plugins in here. There's the baseline plugin, the electric, and the tube synth. So you're gonna do most of your meat with the tube synth down here. Um, electric is really nice, but it's electric piano, so it's kind of um, a very specific sound. And then we've got our baseline synthesizer. We're gonna start with a baseline, so let's click on that. Just click that down. And now, if you press something, Kind of sounds funky and weird what you need to do is select a higher bank so that it's like a higher octave 
don't worry about how nasty the bass line, like the, the sound itself is, because we can change that in a minute. So what we're going to do is we're going to start by making the bass line. So I've got to figure out the melody here. <laughs> Very basic. So we're going to first we're going to hold note repeat right here and check what our sound division is. It's one sixteenth. That's okay. This means that it's going to automatically quantize. It's going to put um, sounds in the spot to be in time with the music instead of them being sounding like they're totally by hand and maybe like out of um, tempo with the rest of the song. So one sixteenth is good. That's uh, enough detail that you can get a pretty complex um, bass line or melody. If it's one eighth, you're going to find that it shuffles them so that it doesn't sound like the bass line that you put in. So one sixteenth is good. One thirty two, unless you're really good with your finger jumping or finger like your, your timing, um, one thirty two, you're going to hear things being out of time. So one sixteenth is pretty good. Now I'm going to try this. I can't guarantee that I'm going to get it right on my first try, but let's give it a shot. <laughs> This is why I do it a little bit before I um, play it because I often make mistakes because I forget how I'm doing it. Maybe we need an octave lower. Let me let me try here. Okay, let's try that octave. Okay, so I just listened to it there to make sure that everything is in the right time. Um, one thing you want to make a note of is if you record something in here, you click um, record and play start and you like record a whole eight bars or however many bars you've got selected there, when it's done, it's going to automatically switch to overdub. So if you press anything else after that, it's going to uh, like include that. It's going to start overdubbing that in. So when you're done recording the, the eight bars, press stop. Even if you want to add to it after that, press stop and then overdub record. The reason is the undo button works per, um, per overdub. So if I record something and let it play through and it plays through and then I want to add something to it and it's still on over, overdub and I start recording that in there and then it's still on overdub and I start recording something else and I make a mistake. If I hit the overdo or the undo button, it's going to undo everything in that little session right there. So you want to record something that you like in that eight, those eight bars, press stop. Then overdub, record, record something else, press stop. That means, or, or that way, uh, if you make a mistake in a single little session right there, you can back up just that one thing and not back up through all of your work in that entire session. So. Now that we've gotten that, got that done there, I don't really like this bass line. It kind of like doesn't fit with the beat. Let's listen to it real quickly while we click on default here and we're going to scroll through some different um, uh, synthesized plugins, okay, or some, diff some different bass line patches. Okay, I actually like this one. It's a little bit late starting. The envelope is a little bit late starting, but I like it. I think it sounds nice with the beat. Let's listen one more time. Now, 
Now, let's say you like this here, but you feel like the envelope starts a little bit too late and you want it to start just a little bit faster. What you can do from here, since I'm on the plugin, I can click on menu and I can go to program edit. And in here, it's going to bring up that baseline synth. And everything that you can adjust is right in here. So you've got some different options. You've got your oscillator filter and envelope, your velocity, your Mister, I don't know what that is, and your chorus, I'll probably know what that is once I finish the video and be like, oh, duh, it's this. You've got your delay and your compressor and hype, whatever hype is. So we're going to adjust the, are we going to adjust the, well, there's the envelope right there, and the attack seems to be fully at the beginning. <laughs> That's okay. I can't really adjust the envelope any more than it already is, so let's just leave it as it is. It's really not bad. Um, for some of them, you, you'll find that the envelope is um, like already set where it's perhaps, perhaps like this. If I start it up here, then it won't do anything for some reason. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing here. Okay, let's move that envelope back down here. Um, for the baseline synth, it's pretty basic. Let me just make sure it's targeting here. For the baseline synth, it's pretty basic. You've only got a few options down here. Down here. Um, for the tube synth, it's a lot more complicated, and we'll see that in just a second. So let's go back to our main screen just by clicking the main button. Boink. We're back here. And next, we're going to copy this. We're going to do edit and copy and go to the next sequence. It says sequence one to sequence three. I hope this is coming up on my camera. Click on do it. OK and then main, and now we're on sequence three, and everything we've already done is in sequence three, so now we want to... Whoops, I accidentally clicked the stop button. Now we want to build on it uh, even more. Okay, so we're going to go to track three, and we're going to go to plugin. We're going to add another plugin here, if I can. There we go, plugin two. We're going to change... Oh, this, there we go. It's already on tube synth, so have a listen. <laughs> You'll notice that the bank is still up here, so that's basically the oscillator range. Now, remember, if we record the melody with this um, patch, we can still change it right after. So let's just start by recording it with this patch, and then we will uh, adjust the sound later. We just want to get a good melody for it. Another thing I recommend doing is using the arpeggiators. So I'm going to hold shift and hit note repeat. We've got it uh, down here. Let's just listen to our song real quick. So let's put that little melody in there, okay? So I'm going to click on record. This is a fresh track, so I don't have to worry about recording over, so I can use the record button. Play start. I did it, I hit the overdub button to stop it from overdubbing. You don't have to hit stop, you can also hit overdub. So I hit the overdub button and it stopped it. Of course, that'll keep it playing, but it stopped the recording. Uh, that means that if I make any mistakes in future sessions on the same track, that I don't uh, erase it by hitting the undo button, like I just mentioned. Okay, so let's have a quick listen here. not bad, but let's just say that the um, tube synth is kind of like, I don't know, it's not quite right. So what we're going to do is we're going to change the preset. So again, we're going to click on the default button. And then as it's playing, we're going to go through the different defaults and find something that totally fits. 
Another thing to mention is if you want to make it yourself, you can go into the menu button right here, go to program edit, and you can change a whole bunch of things. So if I hit play start here, Okay, so without even choosing a different patch, I actually like uh, this one after I've made some adjustments to it. Um, if you do end up making a patch that you like, you can save it. Click the Save button right there. And I recommend not saving on your internal drive. Always save on an SD card or an SSD drive. Um, so let's go to Plugin Saves, Tube, and let's call it Shelter. Why not? I don't know why I'm calling it shelter, I'm just calling it that. Okay. I'm afraid some of this um, text isn't gonna show up perfectly on the camera and I do apologize for that. It's just very contrasty. So some of the words that are underneath the like white bars and stuff might not show up. I do apologize for that. Okay, so let's play this again. <laughs> Okay, very good. So again, we're going to click on the edit button. We're going to go to copy the sequence. We're going to do it. We're going to do it again. Let's just imagine that this is the part of the song that plays through a couple of times without changing. So it's letting you enjoy this part of the song. So number three and number four are exactly the same. That's where we introduce that new tube synth. But number five, which is now what we're on, mm, Sequence 5 right there, even though it's called Sequence 1, that's just because we copied it, so it copies the name as Sequence 1. You can name all of your sequences if you want to, just by clicking on the Edit button, and then up here, you can change it. 5. So there we go, this one's called 5. Um, so on here, we're going to introduce a change of some sort. So let's go to our, let me just click on, you see that right here, down on the bottom, it's all the divisions of time. That's because the note repeat is selected. If I click it to uncollect it, or un uh, disconnect it, then I've got um, menu options down here again, including the MIDI and audio. And my phone's going bl blurry. Okay, so from here, what we're going to do is we're going to go back to track one, that's our beat. We're going to mute it. Now this mute will only be for this sequence. So one, two, three, and four will all have the beat, and then five is suddenly gonna have no beat. Um, so if we play it, good, okay. So now we're gonna go back to track Four. This is the new one that we haven't used yet, and we're going to introduce a new sound. So I'm going to actually in, uh, add another plugin right here. So plugin three, it's defaults to the tube synth, and I'm going to select the electric. So have a listen to this. <laughs> Okay, so let's see if I can find a chord uh, or a few chords to go along with this. Now, you'll have to bear with me. I'm not the best at doing chords on here, but uh, we, I know the first one will be... Oops. out a chord for all these. Uh, I'm just going to do a melody because I'm <laughs> not going to work on the chord. So I'm going to hold shift and click note repeat. Sorry, I had to move the camera when I did that. So it's shift and note repeat. That's to latch it on there. Right now it's on 1 16th. So I'm going to change it to 1 8th. Let's have a play here. Okay, that should 
work. Kind of repetitive, but it doesn't matter. It's just adding a new element to the song. So we're going to hit record, play start. Oops. Okay, so I totally messed up there. What do I do? Like, that's absolutely messed up. Hit undo once, and now we're back to the start again. So... That's the one we want. So click on record, click on play start. Okay, that works. That's a nice new element. And let's add another element to the song. Let's add track five. And we're going to add another plugin. Don't worry about the CPU usage on here. If you have a look, there's the CPU right there. It says 3%. I'll read it to you because it's probably not very clear. When I click play. Even with all those, uh, all three of those um, uh, plugins running, it was at 28%, and half of, or more than half of that is just the system running itself, or like all the samples and stuff like that. You can run a lot of programs on here in standalone mode and not have to worry about it using too much of the CPU. So don't worry about that. Let's have another plugin here. I'm going to, I want something soft here. So let's let's go through some of these and hear something soft. Not soft. <laughs> Hmm, I like that. Well, it's a little bit heavy. Okay, so I think it's going to be... It's a little bit fast. I hope I can get this right. I've got to really be fast on the, the finger padding here, but let's see. Oh, it's a little bit fast. Okay, we're going to do that because uh, I could, if I had two hands and a lot more time, I could click on here and I could actually write the sequence in here um, using uh, the, the pencil right here and then just start writing it in here. And it will write it in according to the size of your division down here. So if I click on 1 16th, it's going to make it smaller. 132, it's going to make it even smaller and so on and so forth. But, uh, so forth. but right now we're doing it on uh, uh, eighths and I'm not going to use the pencil drawing in here because I'm just trying to do this in time. So I'm going to use the arpeggiator again just to add a new element to the song. So our chords are, or our arpeggio, arpeggio is... <laughs> try and do that in time with a thing and I'm probably gonna make mistakes but let's just see how I do okay let's try it out Whoops, it's a little faster than that undo I just uh, press stop and undo 
and record. I made a mistake again. Oh my god, it's too fast for me. It's too fast for me. Oh well, you know what I want to do. Let's just do something a little more basic. So I've still got that mistake in there. I'm going to hit the undo button if we play back. There it is without it. Okay. So another basic thing. Again, if I had more time and I wasn't holding a camera, I would do it a lot better. Um, but we're just adding elements to show how to make a song in this. So let's click on record, start, stop. Okay, now one problem that we've got right here is that this sound is a lot, like it's a little too overpowering. Um, first it's the patch and secondly it's the volume of this. So the last track that we did, this one right here, oopsies, close, and let's go to solo and if we listen to it, this one's being overpowered by track five. So we want to stop doing that. So let's turn off solo because we just wanted to hear it out. Go back to track five right here. And we're going to go to this button. That's our levels. Track five right here. We're going to turn this down a bunch. And we're going to give it a try. So right there. Uh, whatever you do, don't hit overdub. Like don't let it be on overdub when you adjust the volume on here. So if you record something on here and you're listening to it and you're thinking it's too loud, and so you click on level and then you adjust the volume, it's actually going to record that automation into the song so it'll start off really loud and go quiet and it's really hard to undo. So it's always recommendable after you finish recording um, a single, like however many bars you have, two, four, eight, you click the overdub button to turn off overdub and then make any future adjustments, whether it be recording a new part or adding to it or adjusting the volume, okay? Always turn off overdub between stuff, otherwise you're gonna get into a real mess of things. So let's have a listen to it now. Okay, there we go, it's not overpowering it anymore, but I wanna change the sound. So let's go back to main, and we're gonna to go to wall of bright, that's the, uh, the patch we have right now, and we're gonna start listening for, uh, to some new ones. Okay, so that's good enough, good enough. This is not gonna be a hit song. So now that we've got all this done, we've got two new parts or two new tracks in um, sequence five. We're going to copy sequence five and we're gonna copy to sequence six. It's defaulted that way, click on do it. Get out of here to main. We're gonna go back to track one where our beat is and we're going to reintroduce the beat back in it. So I unmuted it for this sequence. Remember, if you unmute it in sequence six, it's still muted in sequence five and so on and so forth. However, if you copy um, a track, if you copy a sequence with a muted track, then it'll be muted in the next sequence unless you unmute it. So let's hear how this sounds. Okay, so this is gonna be a really short song. <laughs> um, one thing we're gonna do here is uh, like just good practice is if you introduce, let's say a couple of tracks like we did in five and you bring the beat back in six, then you're gonna to wanna to copy it to seven, do it, and copy it to eight, 
do it, and then in eight, introduce changes. That's because you're allowing people to enjoy that part of the song where it builds back up again. That's the main sequence part of the song. So you want to have it more than just one part. You want to have it a couple sequences instead of one sequence. So now we're in a sequence eight, and this is going to be the one where we start killing things down to uh, create the end of the song. So I'm going to uh, go to track, let's say, two. Let's have a listen to this. Yeah, that's our bass line. We want to keep that in there. Um, track three, I think that was one of the loud things. Okay, we can mute this. We're not going to have this. We're going to start reducing elements to get down to the end of the song. So track three is going to be muted. Uh, track four, we'll keep in. Track five, we'll mute. And there is no track six. So have a listen to it now. Okay, that's good. And then we're going to copy this to sequence 10, do it. And then for sequence 10, go back to the main screen here. For sequence 10, we're going to mute some more. Let's see here. We're going to, we'll keep the bass line. We're going to mute the um, beat. So we'll have it just without the beat. That'll work. Okay, and that will be the end of our song. So what do we do in order to turn this into a song? Well, it's quite simple. What we're going to do is we're going to click on menu. We're going to click on song right here. And then we're going to start introducing, we're going to start um, uh, inserting uh, sequences. So we insert the first one. I don't know if you can see that on here, but the first one says five. Uh, and actually, everything after five says five. But you can see the, there's a number beside it. It's Let's see if I can get it to focus on that. You can see that um, it says nine. Okay, so we're going to turn that down to one. Then we're going to insert. Turn that up to two. Insert. Three. We just keep doing this for the length of the song. I believe there are ten sequences in total. I think there are ten. Maybe there are just nine. Oh, yeah, okay, 10 is unused, so we're going to delete that sequence. So it's nine sequences long, not too bad. So after we've got all these things sequenced, if we hit play start, it's going to play all of them sequence by sequence, so it's going to play the whole song. For the sake of this video, I'm not going to subject all of you to the torture of listening to the entire nine sequences again. We're just going to go on to the next step, which is converting it into a wave or an MP3 or an AIF. If you just want to straight up turn this into an MP3 that you can put on SoundCloud or you can put on Twitter or whatever you want to, then you click on export right here. And from here, you've got your start bar is one, you've got to add a tail is one second, just enough time for it to finish off. Um, you've got your end bar is 72, so that's basically all of your, your nine times eight is 72. Mm, yeah. And then you're going to select your wave format and your uh, bit depth and your sample rate. So let's choose MP3. And bitrate 128, 44.1. This is not the purest's level right here. Like higher would be better. But if you want just CD quality, this is CD quality. 128, 44.1 is CD quality. So that's all you need if you want to have CD quality audio. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to click on export. Oops, it was over here. Let me just cancel that. Oops. Ah, darn it. Let me do this again. Export. MP3, everything's selected there. I'm going to click on export right here. Then it asks for a name and where I want to save it. I really can't stress this enough. Do not save things to the internal drive, okay? Save things into whatever storage you have, but not the internal drive. I know this thing's 16 gigabytes, but almost all of it is used up by sounds and samples and system files. And just like a phone, if you fill up the internal storage, it starts acting up all weird. So always use whatever external storage you have that you can. So here I have a folder for MP3. I'm going to name this. I'm going to name this YouTube Test. Okay. And hit do it. And save right down here. Save. And now it's going to convert it. So I'll pause this and let it finish exporting. And then I'll teach you one more trick. 
Okay, and it's all done. Now we're back to the song making screen where I can actually show you another trick with this thing, and that is what if you wanted to record vocals into this song? Um, as it is currently, if you go to your main thing here and you go to audio, then audio one, if you record in, like, let's say your microphone, you start recording in whatever, it's going to let you record until you're the end of uh, the eighth bar, and then the sequence is over and it's going to stop the recording. Then you have to go on to the next sequence with eight bars and start recording that part. You could do it that way, but there is an easier way to be able to record the entire song without stopping it, and that is go to your menu, go to your song, then click on Convert Sequence. From here, what it's going to do is it's going to take all those sequences and put it into one long sequence. Now, one thing is there's a bug in here where if I just click OK right now, like if I just click this in right now, it'll say that it's done, but it doesn't actually do it. Um, so what you need to do is turn it up one sequence and down one sequence. Always do this, okay? So when you're going to convert sequence, up one and down one. So now it's going to use the tenth sequence. Let's do do it. And for sequence 10, if you look at up here, where is sequence 10? Where did you go? D, one, two, three. Did I do that right? Let's do insert. Go to here. Okay. On here you can see it. Um, it's 10 and mm, there's the BPM, whatever, but then you see the bars is 72. So it's one sequence with 72 bars. So if I go back to main, right down here, let me just zoom this back out again. Whoops. Okay. Go back to main here, and I go to the tenth sequence. It's already selected. The tenth sequence is 72 bars. That's the entire song. That's all of the bars and sequences that you've already made, and they play in one sequence. So this way, you can click on your audio track right here, and click on your audio track, and you can arm it, and then you can hit record, and play start, and start singing in the microphone and start recording to the entire thing and you can even pause it or like you can stop during the playing and then hit play and start recording more and then stop and play and if you make a mistake you can go back to the part that you made a mistake at go to just before and record over that and it will keep whatever you've recorded before that just as long as you don't record over it so the way the recorder works is it records 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 make a mistake go back a little bit keep recording 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 you don't have to worry about it like resetting the entire audio track just because you stopped it or whatever anyway that's that one trick now the last thing you need to know about this is even though you've converted this to an mp3, you have not saved your project. So what do you do for that? Up here on the top, there's the little folder icon. Click on that. Down on the bottom, you've got a Save As button. Let me see if I can get it in focus. There we go. Save As. Let's do that. Do not save on your internal drive. Click on New Volume. Save it to whatever folder you're going to save it to. Let's, let's do Learning. for YouTube. Do it, and then we're gonna click Save down here. You just gotta wait a second. Depending on how complex the song, it'll take longer. If you have a lot of tracks with a lot of different samples and a lot of different uh, plugins and whatever, it's gonna take a little bit longer. I like how the camera just keeps going out of focus like this. It's wonderful. I'm not being sarcastic at all. Anyway, that's uh, it for my tutorial. Um, let me just switch the camera around. So yeah, that's it for my tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you did, leave a comment in the comment section down below. I really appreciate a like and a subscribe if you have the chance to do so. And I hope to see you guys in the next video I make. Until then, this is Katekus, out.